Hello and welcome to this video, which is in our engine opening series. I'm Grandmaster Matthew Sadler, and today we are going to be having a look at the Berlin. Don't switch off because it's going to be quite interesting. We're going to try and understand why do engines uh, choose the Berlin as their main line and what could possibly attract them to it. Um, and, you know, the reason I got started into this was I was just thinking that, you know, engines have, of course, they've changed many aspects of chess, you know, some obvious, some less so. Um, but it struck me, you know, that uh, they're also changing the way in which opening lines develop. I mean, in the good old pre-computer days, you know, a new line would be met by all sorts of, you know, initial tries, which didn't quite pass muster. And they'd allow you to demonstrate the line's main ideas. And then as time passed, new counters would be developed and they gradually start to take the edge off the line until it was more or less neutralized. But, you know, but somewhere along the way, you'd have games where the main idea of the line was manifest and you could see why the line was punted. And, uh, you know, nowadays with engine assistance, we tend to zoom in much more quickly on the lines recommended by the engines. And, and that whole process of trying out inferior lines first is uh, is greatly reduced. And, um, you know, that's kind of a long way of saying that you, you sometimes don't understand very well why certain lines are being suggested by engines when they instantly provide the best line to neutralize it. So one thing I've first started doing is to find um, uh, to try and find plausible but you know likely second rate moves within uh, a variation and then running engine matches between Stockfish, Leela, Komodo Dragon and a somewhat weaker engine. Here I took uh, Fritz Neuronal which uh, is the, uh, the Ginkgo uh, uh, engine um, and you know the goal is to try and discover what happens when inferior lines are played and then not defended by you know the top three engines like Stockfish, Leela and Komodo Dragon. And because, you know, there's, <laughs> there's nothing weaker than a human player, I've also been trying those same lines myself against Leela. Um, well, Leela, um, one node. So just looking one half move deep to uh, avoid too much disappointment for myself. You know, the, the results are pretty revealing and um, I wanted to uh, go through with you uh, the results of, of an exercise that I did um, in this well-known line of the Rai Lopez Berlin. You know, why would the engines recommend this line as best play for white and for black? What might attract them to this line? Well, let's just uh, first of all go through, you know, how do we reach this line? It's uh, e4, e5, knight f3, knight c6, bishop b5, knight f6, castles, knight takes e4, Rook e1, knight d6, takes, bishop e7, bishop f1, takes, takes, castles, d4, bishop f6, rook e1. And this line will be very familiar to uh, uh, watchers of the TCC who uh, lived through this line many times during the, uh, um, the starting position chess gauntlet played between uh, um, Stockfish, Leela and Komodo Dragon and all the other engines. Basically, the top three engines were trying to beat all the other engines just from the plain starting position. Well, you know, a lot of engines think the Berlin is best, so this position cropped up quite a bit and quite a few draws ensued. Knight e8, um, so that knight on d6 is somewhat misplaced, so the knight is brought back to e8 in order to allow the pawn to come to d5 and now knight d2 from white. So, I mean, let's just have a look, you know, at the at the position and, um, you know, from the, from the black point of view, of course, you know, blacks achieved quite a lot, you know, in this position. The pawn structure is symmetrical and blacks already exchanged off a rook and a minor piece, which, you know, really alleviates any concerns black might have about, you know, being cramped or, um, um, or yeah, being behind in development. But, you know, white's got a small series of dynamic advantages, which may or may not grow into something significant. I mean, we've got black's queenside pieces are, um, are uh, undeveloped. Can I put that in red? Ooh, yes, there we are. Undeveloped, we'll include the queen in that. Um, we've got, um, yeah, black's dark squared bishop here is uh, pointing, uh, yeah, towards um, this pawn structure, d4, c3, b2. So it's kind of, yeah, blocked, you know, not seemingly doing anything very interesting at all. Um, Black hasn't yet played um, the move uh, c7 to c6 to support the pawn on d5. Um, the knight on e8 is um, a little bit odd. Um, yeah, you know, it's actually played that knight's gone to f6 to e4 to d6 back to e8. Um, I mean, white's also got control of the e-file and could increase that with, um, uh, with queen e3 and rook e1. 
you know so i mean it's not it's not a lot um but it's not nothing you know and uh, you know black's also got some slight concerns about the back rank so you know there there is something there that uh, could grow out into um into uh, into initiative you know if uh, if you're given the chance so you know what i what i did then i um um i just came up with some uh, some plausible looking ideas ideas that i could explain with some sort of logic and then just tried them and uh, try them against Leela, uh, one node, and then also put Stockfish against uh, uh, Fritz Neuronal. Um, uh, Fritz Neuronal was running also on slightly fewer CPUs, just 48, and also with a little bit less uh, hash, you know, than, uh, than Stockfish. So just to try and, uh, you know, it wasn't scientific or anything, but just to make it just, uh, you know, weak enough so that uh, there might be some difference. And um, yeah, actually Stockfish managed to make, um, you know, a reasonable number of wins. So the first move I looked at here was uh, the move B6. Here we are. Um, what's the logic? Well, black wants to uh, complete the queen side development, play the bishop to B7, and um, that will support the knight coming D6 into E4. Um, and B6 will also support C5 attacking this D4 pawn. So how does that turn out? Well, let's see what Leela 1 no did. So knight F3, bishop B7, queen E3, knight D6, rook E1, knight E4, bishop D3, c5 95 takes takes and you can sort of say that you know from the human perspective i played quite consistently and i've implemented the um, um the development scheme i had in mind but yeah you know when you uh, start to look at it um you sort of understand that there are a few problems here for black um first of all you know white's um knight on e5 here is much more solid than black's knight on e4 because, uh, you know, I can play um, f2 to f3 to chase away that knight on e4. And black's bishop on f6 here. Well, yeah, you know, it's a little bit awkward. It's, uh, it's blocking f7 to f6. So the only way that black can get rid of that knight is to take on e5, which, you know, feels like it gives white the two bishops. Well, it does, certainly. And, you know, that's not something that you necessarily want. The other thing is that, um, especially after playing f2 to f3, um, I was getting rather concerned about knight to g4. Um, attacking this bishop on f6 and um, uh, yeah you know I mean um, um, it just sort of felt actually that um, you know after playing f3 then um, oops good lord white's uh, got um, um, pressure along the b1 h7 diagonal and white seems to have a lot of access to king side squares you know and um, um, and that's rather yeah I mean that's that just seems rather difficult for black Let's see how uh, the game continued. I mean, I played h5 here to uh, to try and stop um, uh, knight g4. Um, and then we got queen e2, g6, f3, knight d6. So here, um, actually, you know, a slow build up. Um, I think uh, Stockfish was doing something like um, h3 and then g4, you know, just trying to uh, hit this uh, kingside pawn structure. Would have been pretty good. Um, Leela went knight takes g6, which is dangerous, um, but um, yeah, not actually the best move. Now, for some reason, I was intended to play bishop takes d4 check straight away, but um, somehow I, I seem to play fg on automatic pilot. And um, uh, well, this was actually quite horrible for me. Bishop takes d4, bishop e3, takes takes, queen c7. I mean, uh, obviously, you know, normally I'd just be lost here, but um, uh, but I'm playing against Leela one node, and uh, uh, well, rook c3 would have been a really strong move. Queen f4, just chase the queen away and go king g2, and we've got threats here, and rook c7 as well. It's just uh, hopeless for uh, for black. Um, but uh, Leela played queen f6. Rook f8, rook c3 would still have been strong, but played rook e7. Oops, rook e7, sorry. And um, uh, yeah, I mean, here I uh, actually did, uh, I calculated this quite nicely uh, because uh, king f, queen c5, check, king f1, bishop a6. I'd seen this idea quite a long time before. Queen g1, check, king d2, queen g2, king d1, queen g1. And now um, actually black's best, white's best here was the, the line, the main line I calculated, which was rook e1, bishop e2, check. Obviously, if you take on here, um, I can go uh, something like um, rook e8. And um, um, if you go uh, king d2, then um, I go queen g5 check and swap off the queens, which, you know, should be fine for uh, for black. Um, as it is, um, uh, Leela one node, not calculating, played queen d2 and got caught out by queen g5 check, after which I uh, managed to finish off the game there. Um, 
but that was obviously quite interesting i mean you know putting my bishop on b7 um i was obviously struggling you know to um uh to control squares like um like g4 and f5 and it turned out as well that my knight on e4 was not particularly stable it could be chased away easily by f3 whereas white's knight on e5 you know was uh, was quite uh, was was difficult to chase away without black giving up the two bishops so that's that's very interesting uh, points already um, if we're just looking at what um, um, uh, Stockfish did against uh, Fritz Neuronal, um, then Stockfish played the move h3, uh, which is quite interesting actually. a5, knight f3, a4, queen e3, a3, so uh, going for the rook's pawn march from, um, from uh, uh, Fritz, and then knight d6, bishop d3. So in my game, I played my uh, my bishop to b7 just to be consistent. But um, I mean, Fritz takes a, a better decision, keeps the bishop on e6, which you know keeps some control at least over the uh, the dark squares here. But um, yeah, I mean, if we have a look at what um, uh, uh, Stockfish did here, bishop b1, rook c8, g4. You know, h3 and g4, very common plan from Stockfish in this line. You know, White's trying to wrest control of, uh, of kingside squares. We get uh, stop black's pieces coming into g4 and f5, and um, yeah, also create attacking chances for itself. And um, well, Fritz tries to plug the center with knight e4, and then we see something that, uh, a stockfish did very typically as well. Once it had taken some space on the king side, it went for the queen side as well. And this position was, yeah, very, very nice for white. I mean, uh, full control of the B file, um, a square on C6 to uh, to attack, and also, yeah, chances on the uh, on the king side. And the um, you know this knight on E4. Let's put that in red. There we are. Is not too stable because we can chase it away with uh, with F3 later. And uh, yeah, I mean, Stockfish um, actually just won this position. So um, again, you know, we see um, um, a slightly, you know, uh, um, suboptimal move there. And White grabbing kingside space, stopping the black pieces from establishing themselves uh, on the kingside. And uh, actually, yeah, you know, White ending up um, taking control of the uh, of the whole board. And another, you know, key thing again, knight on e4, not stable for uh, for Black. So that was um, uh, the move 14b6. Let's just go back there. So what other move did uh, did I try? Well, one move that I tried was the move bishop e7 in this position. So, I mean, you sort of uh, reason that uh, the bishop on f6 was vulnerable to uh, a knight g4, um, and I couldn't drive away when a knight came to e5, I couldn't drive uh, uh, the knight away with f6. So let's just, you know, redevelop this bishop to a more active diagonal and a less exposed position. Sounds logical as well. So queen e3, and then bishop d6. That's the idea that I wanted. Um, just going to exchange off the dark squared bishops uh, quickly, and then, um, well, afterwards, uh, you know, the more pieces exchanged, the closer black should be to equality. But um, yeah, you know, again, doing it in uh, in this way, I had some problems uh, developing my pieces to the most active squares. And um, uh, here, you know, the white grabs the b1h7 diagonal again. Queen f6, queen g3, knight d6, and then this nice move, rook e5. And it's kind of difficult, you know. I mean, um, you know, the rook on e5 is hard to shake. The queen is cuts very unpleasantly across the black position. For example, if I go c6, I've even got to watch out for bishop h7 and rook h5 check, followed by queen d6, picking up a pawn. Um, and, uh, yeah, I mean, white's got plenty of scope, again, for gaining space on the king side, activating its knight there. So after rook e8, we go knight f1, g6, and now, you know, h4 was um, was Stockfish's uh, favourite move with a clear advantage. And um, what Leela did was knight e3, which is, in principle, quite good. But um, the, the problem is, is that this, um, uh, this rook on e5 is a bit shorter squares. And I can actually just uh, target it a little bit, just with the move queen g7 threatening f6. So black has to go, white has to go knight f1, and then I get to, you know, to sort of neutralize the um, uh, the white play. I mean, it's not super comfortable, but I, um, you know, I drew this one without uh, too much further incident. But yeah, the whole game itself was, was rather uncomfortable. So, um, you know, just uh, somehow, you know, white getting control of um, of kingside uh, squares somehow. You know, I mean, you, you get more and more the feeling that, um, uh, you know, that that's really a crucial part of Black's uh, early opening play, because if you don't get that, then, yeah, actually, you're quite likely to have some problems. You know, I mean, uh, I'm playing Leela with one node, you know, which is why I'm... Uh, <coughs> getting away with it but um yeah you know uh, against a full leela i might have a problem there 
The next move I tried was just bishop d7. So, you know, just a developing move and not a particularly active one. Um, you know, never played again. But, um, yeah, you know, you could imagine it being played. And, uh, well, this is... Uh, um, uh, yeah, let's have a look at what Leela played first of all. So queen e3, h6, bishop d3, bishop g5. I decided I'd try and uh, and uh, exchange off the uh, the bishops this way. But okay, knight f3 takes takes. Queen f6, here Leela went queen e5. Queen g3 was also uh, maybe interesting. Takes takes, rook d8, rook e1, king f8 and h4. And, uh, you know, the queens are off and that definitely helps black. But uh, again, you know, the situation's not too different to what we saw before. I mean... Great piece on e5, hard to drive away. Um, black pieces having problems getting footholds on the king side, and why it's got plenty of you know space to expand. I mean, you're, you're going to be happy with uh, with something like this as white. And um, yeah, I mean, actually, uh, this this turned out quite interesting. I mean, I actually meant to play bishop e8 before this move, but I, I didn't really pay attention. And uh, well, here, you know, white could have just played takes takes and rook e5, which is quite awkward. I mean, um, you know, these. Uh, these pawns here are um, are definitely not uh, not too healthy, um, but Leela kept on going with h5, and actually I managed to, to generate quite a bit of counterplay. I was a bit more worried about bishop e2 coming round to f3 and attacking d5, and that was probably a better move. After bishop c2, funnily enough, I managed to get quite a bit of counterplay, and uh, I came up with quite a nice tactic. I was quite happy about it. I should have taken on c3 first, but well, got another chance. Um, and then played this move f5, which is maybe not the best, but it's a cunning little tactic. So um, if knight takes f5, I go bishop h5, and uh, well, you've got some problems here. And uh, if um, uh, bishop takes f5, which was played in the game, then um, I go rook e2 takes king g7, and uh, all those pieces, uh, those pieces, those pieces are just uh, those pieces are uh, are hanging. So uh, I just end up winning a piece wasn't completely smooth as I remember the uh, the winning process but um, it was good enough against Leela one node um, but you see again you know I mean um, some little time wasting you know not playing uh, moves uh, just you know really efficiently from black and yeah you're just ending up in a um, well a slightly somewhat cheerless uh, situation there really um, interesting also was uh, the game that uh, played between um, uh, Stockfish and uh, Fritz because after a4, a5, knight f3, Fritz played knight d6. And it was an interesting moment because I'd idly wondered whether, you know, would it be possible just to play knight d6? And if white takes on d6 like this, you know, we'll, um, uh, we can claim that, uh, OK, it's not a great structure, but we can just hold it. But um, actually, um, uh, Fritz was doing this quite a lot against Stockfish. And Stockfish was taking on d6 and then just uh, basically winning, well, I mean, winning 75% of all the games. And um, the basic approach that uh, Stockfish had was simply to put all of its kingside pawns on dark squares, um, like so, and just basically completely hem in, let's put it in red, this uh, bishop on h6. And then afterwards, you're just going to line up on this d5 pawn. And obviously, you know, you can attack it with um, a bishop, queen and knight. So, um, yeah, I mean, that's just going to be uh, incredibly painful. And, uh, yeah, you know, I mean, uh, there was some activity from black to deal with. But, yeah, Stockfish was just always managing to win the pawn on d5 and then afterwards to uh, to win the game. So this this was also quite interesting, you know, and uh, um, I mean, there's also some lines in the uh, yeah, in, in the in the main lines, actually, where, uh, you know, white threatens to take on D6. And I'd, I sort of wondered in those really, you know, whether was it a threat. But serious, you know, it seems that uh, from what uh, Stockfish is doing here, it's a it's a very serious threat. It's not a pawn structure that you should go for. What else did I do after um, after knight D2? Um, I also looked at um, bishop e6 here, um, which was uh, yeah uh, probably you know a little more um, a little more reasonable there, um, and um, yeah I mean uh, Stockfish uh, made quite a nice uh, stab of it really. Leela didn't um, uh, didn't really get anywhere uh, against me there. I got very easy equality though. Unfortunately, I do have to say that I um, really did not play the ending very well and ended up losing it. <sighs> So that was uh, rather embarrassing. Um, but um, yeah, I mean, uh, Stockfish did quite a nice job, I felt, you know, with uh, with white here. So yeah, bishop moving to d3 on the um, uh, b1h7 diagonal. We're getting the um, uh, the e-file 
And um, yeah, again, we've got this move for G4, you know. And uh, after knight e4, yeah, I was kind of wondering, I'm not quite sure, why didn't uh, Stockfish play c4? That's the move that Stockfish normally plays. Uh, played a3 and rook e2 here. Bishop c2, queen a6, knight d2, bishop d3, bishop e5, you know. And uh, yeah, I, I mean, I really felt actually that um, that Stockfish was doing um, a pretty good job here of... Um, of uh, um, building up quite a nice advantage i mean this felt actually like uh, quite a serious advantage but uh, fritz played very well and uh, and held it but still i mean you know you can see the um uh, the simple plan i mean uh, you you're just uh, bringing your bishop to the b1 h7 diagonal putting the queen in the center rook in the center and then trying to gain space on the king side you know pretty easy and uh, um yeah and pretty powerful you know uh, and obviously you know um yeah you know even fritz playing with 48 uh, uh cpus is uh you know way way stronger than a human player so yeah you know might be quite difficult for a human player to uh to defend this um so yeah i mean lots of interesting stuff there i think maybe uh, the interesting thing to look at now is the um the main line um because uh knight d6 was uh probably the most common move of the top three so you know komodo uh, stockfish and uh, and leela um knight d6 queen e3 and bishop f5 and uh, well i mean I, you know i think we can judge uh, a, a few things there first of all black isn't wasting any time with any stupid moves like uh, b6 um or putting the bishop passively the bishop's gone to the most active square bishop uh, on f5 which is preventing white's bishop from getting active and the knight's been brought out to d6 straight away now um Queen g3 is white's main line and we can see what white is teeing up now bishop d6 and this is really dangerous and uh, well i made uh, <laughs> i made uh, yeah you know my engines play all sorts of moves queen d7 rook c8 queen e7 bishop g6 and uh, yeah you know they they all turned out to you know to allow bishop takes d6 and give stockfish another chance to uh, show its technique put all the kingside pawns on dark squares restrict this bishop on f6 and then just win um, but it's interesting now, you know, with that sort of knowledge to look at what the main line is. And the main line for black is bishop h4. And after queen f3, bishop g5. And uh, yeah, there's, you know, a key tactical point here. Obviously, if you go bishop g5, queen g5, well, just compare it to what we saw before. You know, black's much more active than anything that ever happened in in the lines that i played you know the bishops on f5 the queens on the g5 attacking the um uh, the knight on d2 the, the rooks ready to come to e8 you know i mean uh, black's you know not any worse than white for activity here and of course after bishop takes d6 queen d6 queen f5 there's bishop d2 and we had quite a few uh, draws like this in the um in this uh, tcc season 23 chess gauntlet um, what is this telling us actually? Um, what, what's the tentative conclusion that we can draw about this? And well, you know, the reason that Black's able to uh, to play these lines reasonably is that it seems that Black's able to fight quite effectively for the kingside squares. I mean, if Black doesn't do that, then White gets a solid advantage, and it's a extremely unpleasant position to play for uh, for Black. I mean, I would not enjoy playing this as Black at all. But um, just playing very concretely, you know, very actively. Actually, you know, this bishop on f6, which we've identified as a weakness, um, actually um, uh, enables black to um, to fight against white's control of the kingside dark squares. And that potentially is white's biggest advantage. So, uh, you know, that's really why it works. But, you know, black's got to play very concretely and really play single mindedly for that goal. You know, putting the bishop to b7 or just developing quietly and all that. And white's got you know just the move it needs to stop some of white's play and uh, of black's play rather and get some control and then the control that uh, the white has you know a good piece on e5 the possibility to advance the kingside pawns tends to be quite nasty so um and you know I, I guess i did sort of know this but um somehow you know it's sort of knowledge that you that you have that you assume but you don't actually you've never actually seen it happening but um seeing engine games and then also playing against leela as well you really feel it you know you feel what's uncomfortable and um and what's um you know what's pleasant and uh well just take one one more look at the line bishop f5 is another major move in the position i think slightly less good to be honest but um uh still played an awful lot so queen e2 um knight d6 
rookie one. I tried all sorts of uh, of, uh, of other moves. I'll, I'll put this. Uh, yeah, I'll put this PGN as well in um, um, on um, uh, yeah the the, the chess pace uh, clown viewer, so um, you can uh, take a look at it. I mean, there was just loads and loads and loads. Um, some moves which were very very sensible, you know, and uh, and still draw, but uh, others were less good. And um, rookie one here, and now you know the interesting point actually is that knight e4 um, here is a clear blunder. Just uh, worth pointing out. Bishop e4, I go f3, um, bishop f5, and bishop c7. And uh, well, we mentioned the uh, the weak dark rank and uh, back rank rather, the weak black back rank, and uh, yeah, indeed we see um, a mate here. Um, and uh, well, I mean, one move that I um, that I tried against uh, Leela was uh, Queen F8. Um, yeah, I mean, not a not a great move, not a super active move, but we you know we're threatening Rook E8 just to exchange off everything. And um, yeah, I mean, Queen H5 um, was played by uh, Stockfish, which is quite reasonable. Queen F3 also. Um, I mean, threatening uh, Bishop takes D6 and then Queen F5 and also threatening Queen takes D5. Um, Knight E4 would leave um, the pawn on C7 hanging. So um, Bishop B6 played, Bishop D3, C6 and H4. And again, you know, I mean, just a slightly inaccurate move, passive move from Black. And yeah, you know, Leela's already, already, you know, uh, uh, attacking. And I can tell you, I just, you know, I was looking at this position and I kept on finding, you know, just rather annoying, unpleasant things to, um, you know, to, to deal with. And um, um, H5 took, took with a knight, Queen G3, just a very nice uh, position there. You know, this strength along the uh, the h 2 b 8 diagonal and also attacking here. And of course, with the queen moving to g3, the knight is free to come in. I mean, basically, you know, you just look at this position. You see, I can think of many ways for uh, white to improve the position, but I can't really see many ways for black to play. So bishop b7, knight f3, bishop d6. And now, yeah, I mean, um, uh, Leela didn't um, really play the best move. I mean, knight g5 was what I was afraid of because uh, there's the rather unpleasant uh, tactic here and takes. And after takes, I go queen d6. And after queen d6, I go knight f7 check and knight d6, which is just a, a pawn up in an ending. You know, it's just a clear win for um, for white. Um, but um, so, I mean, I was going to play um, f5, um, you know, just to block this. But, you know, after knight f3, it's a very nice position for white. Stockfish is giving plus 1.5, which you know, obviously not something you're particularly keen to uh, to face, really. Um, yeah, in the end, I even managed to. Uh, Leela played h6, g6, and uh, I managed to uh, to beat Leela in some uh, cunning tactics later. Um, but I, I mean, I'm still very uncomfortable in uh, in this position. And uh, yeah, things got um, yeah definitely a bit worse than this before I managed to uh, to swindle Leela. Um, but again, you know, if we have a look at you know what is the main move here. Um, Instead of um, queen f8, um, what is the main move? It's uh, c6, and if queen f3, then we're playing bishop g5. You know, again, um, trying to exchange off the dark square bishops and trying to make sure that you're doing it as efficiently as possible. And uh, you know, if bishop g5, we've got queen g5, and we're attacking uh, the knight on d2. And um, yeah, you know, actually, white does still, you know, have um, have an advantage here, but you know, uh, it's 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 too small, really. You know, it's uh, and uh, you know, at, at the elite human level, it's it's not really, uh, you know, being that much. I mean, actually, Stockfish's main line is just to go a5, which uh, is not played very much. And after queen f3, now it was playing knight e4, takes takes, queen g3, c6. And after bishop e5, takes takes h6 f3 bishop g6 and uh well you know white's got a nominal advantage um actually stockfish managed to beat fritz from uh, from this position um after fritz did something quite weird well um in a, there was a, a carlsbad pawn structure in the in the chess in the chess gauntlet i think and uh, and stockfish beat fritz when um um when fritz played um uh, something like um well actually uh, something quite similar to this it played uh, the rook uh, somehow it got it onto b3 and just lined up like this and uh, well actually this is how stockfish beat uh, fritz in the same way that fritz ended up putting all of its pieces pointing towards b2 and uh, stockfish went on the king's side but um but yeah i mean in principle this should just be uh, you know completely even and uh, um yeah and uh yeah you know i mean it's it's just not um not really a serious advantage for uh, for white um but um but yeah, you know, I mean, uh, 
what what I really discovered, you know, about these lines was that first of all, you know, it's interesting to see that um, you know that there are little tactics, you know, like for example in this position, knight e4 is uh, is a blunder. You know, that was quite interesting to see where you know black has to be careful. But I mean, it was very interesting to to understand as well that uh, you know it's a it's a quite a it's a more intricate and a more precise struggle than you think it might be just looking at the opening moves and seeing the number of uh, engine draws in these lines you know there's a real struggle going on for control of uh, of kingside uh, squares you know and in particular um uh f5 g5 and g4 and if black's inaccurate white gets control and then it's a very unpleasant uh, um um, situation for uh, for black but if black's playing concretely and accurately as the engines show then yeah you know it's actually uh, um, of course completely fine for uh, for black and these small advantages that white have you know end up being not very much and um, yeah you know I think that this line in particular I find this very striking queen f3 bishop f5 queen g3 and then not uh, queen e7 which was one of my moves but bishop h4 and uh, just you know the fact that black's got the bishops active and is able to make use of this rather weird bishop on f6 which didn't look like it was doing very much to fight for the kingside dark squares after bishop g5 you know that's really key and uh, and uh, yeah you know tremendously important and of course you know just some um, yeah some very important little tactics you know that this actually works i mean it's not 100% um um you know uh, sorry uh, uh, bishop d6 not bishop d2 but queen d6 now you know, it's not 100% clear that it would always work there might be a an intermezzo or something like that but no no you can do this and the resulting position is even so there we are i mean i hope that's uh, given you some shed some light on the uh, on the berlin and uh, yeah maybe given you uh, just a little bit more appreciation for uh, for that line um certainly uh, you know i i found it very wa interesting watching the engines and uh, found it very interesting doing this sort of investigation and uh, i definitely recommend you know that if there's a line where uh, you say yeah you know all the engines recommend this and the elite players are playing it but i just see so many draws then doing something like what I've done here, which is just uh, putting the top engines against uh, slightly weaker ones or playing Leela at one node and then seeing how Leela does it. You know, uh, Leela's going to play very strongly, but will still give you a chance in the tactics. You know, that's a really pleasant way of, uh, of getting some very deep knowledge about the, uh, about the openings. So there we are. I hope you enjoyed that, despite it being a Berlin. And um, yeah, you know, if you like the video, why not give a like, subscribe to the channel? That would be really lovely. Uh, take a look at my new book, The Silicon Road to Chess Improvement, which has got plenty of great stuff like this. And otherwise, you know, thanks very much for watching and hopefully see you at the next video. Plenty more to come from the TCC.